Good morning, I'm Tyler. You're watching Mocha Mama. Thank you for joining us. And today we're going to move on to step two of making the power supply fan quieter. And this step is going to include some soldering. So if you need some help soldering or if you want to learn a little bit more, I'll leave a link in the description to my soldering video that I released recently. Hopefully there's something in the video that can help you out. Let's begin. Okay, what I want to show you is this little trim pot here. So this controls very specifically the voltage of your power supply. So if we turn the power supply on, I'm going to be very careful here. Okay, so here and here is 24.12 volts. We can turn this just a little bit, and not with that driver. And turn it just a little bit. That went up. I can hear the fans louder now. Yeah, now we're at 26.18 volts. So let's go down. And let's go down until the fan seems fairly quiet. This is 21.67 volts. Let's lift the fan up to see. Before we were up like this, it was much louder. It's around 21 volts. Let's hear what 20 sounds like. And it's close enough. So the point is that if we run the fan, this bearing is not in good condition. If we run the fan at a lower voltage, the RPM is going to drop, but we've also created a lot of extra airflow by cutting this hole out. So dropping the air, the RPM a little bit now will still give us the same result cooling wise as if it was running before at full speed with a big, huge chunk of metal covering everything. It's an easy way to hear the sound just by adjusting this trim pot and dropping four volts sounds pretty good. And what we can do is be very careful. We can do some math. We can get a calculator to do some math for us and then use some resistors to drop the voltage to the fan. I've calculated and if we want to take 24 volts and drop it down to 20 volts, then we need about 40 ohms of resistance. And we should have these here are 41 ohm resistors, or that's what they say at least. So if we put the multimeter to check resistance, we've got 47.2 ohms. The resistors have some tolerance built into them one of these bands will show us how much tolerance so for example there could be a five percent variance okay actually i misread the writing here this is says 47 r seven is kind of blocked off looks like a one what we have is we have some several different colors and the first color is yellow and yellow represents four then we have a violet and violet represents a seven so that's our four, seven, and then there's a black and that represents a multiplier and black is one ohm. So 47 times one ohm equals 47 ohms. And what we read here was 47.2. And after we have this gold band and the gold band is tolerance of 5%. So we have 47 ohms with a tolerance of 5%. So actually our reading was very good. And the final band is for temperature coefficient, which is too technical for us to deal with today. Other thing we need to consider is the amount of watts that we need to dissipate. So if we want to drop from 24 to 20 ohms, we need a resistor rated for about 0 
watts or higher. The way to find the wattage of a resistor is based on the diameter is one way to find out. So if we check the diameter of the largest section of the resistor, we'll see that it's reading at 2.22 millimeters. And when we look at a chart, so I'll put links in the description for all these calculators and things. So when we look at a chart, we see that 2.5 roughly is a quarter watt. So this is 0 0.25 watts, but we need at least 0 0.4. So what we're going to do is actually use two of these together. And when we use two of these together, we're able to make a half watt resistor. And we could even go with three if we wanted to be a little bit more on the careful side. Maybe I'll go for three. If we want to use a number of resistors together to get a higher wattage, what we have to keep in mind is that each time we add another resistor, we're also changing the resistance value. So when we're going to try to combine resistors, there's two ways we can do it. I recommend if you have to buy resistors, just buy correct uh, resistance, one watt resistor, and you'll save yourself a ton of trouble. But there's no reason to go out and buy multiple low value resistors in order to do what we're going to do here. Just one resistor is better in that case. We can line these resistors up in a line. Yeah, they're not going to line up for me. So we can line these resistors up in a line like this. And in this case, the resistance is going to add for each resistor. So we had 47 ohms. And this is going to add 47 plus 47 plus 47. So we're getting 141 ohms. And we can test for this if you want to see quickly connect these together. So it should be very close to 141. 141.3. That is very close. This is called in series. Second thing we can do is we can put them in parallel, so side by side, and then connect the ends together. And what's going to happen in this case, all these are the same value. So if they're all the same value, then we can simply divide by three. So we have 47 divided by three. So we should have about 15.6 resistance. Let's see how this works. 15.8 ohms. It's very close. So you can see when we try to create more power dissipation, more wattage by combining the resistors, we end up with a new issue that the resistors value must change in order to get what we want. So if we want about 47 ohms and we want to go in parallel, then what we need to do is we need to take three 150 ohm resistors and we'll end up with about 50 ohms finally. If we go in series, then what we're going to need to do is we're going to need to do a lower value resistor. So for example, what do I have? I have 22 ohms here. Three of these 22 ohms will give me 66. That's a little bit higher than I want, actually. You have to see what you have and what's available. We can't actually get every value of resistor. So there's standard values of resistors, and then we use the standard values to get what we want. There's more complicated ways to add resistors. We can do a combination of series and parallel, and we can also do a combination of different resistances together. But the calculations for these start to get a lot more complicated. And I don't want to make a video about calculating the resistance. So uh, I will leave a link to the video that I found was pretty good and seems to explain easily, in my opinion at least, how this works. And if you wanted to do something more complicated than just simply putting same resistors in series or parallel, then this video might help you out. In my case, what I'm going to do is I'm going to use 
three 150 resistance resistors. So if I take this 150 here, then I twist three of them together in parallel. I should expect now 100 and sorry, I should expect 50 ohms of resistance if they stay together. 50.2. So this is good. So this is how I'm going to do my setup like this. And it's going to include some soldering. So if you don't know how to solder, if you want to just brush up a little bit, I have a soldering video and I'll leave the link in the description below also. And you can check that out. It'll give you enough information so that you should be fairly comfortable with doing this amount of soldering work. Okay, so I've gone and I've made this twist a little bit nicer than before, and I'm going to start and wire. And we'll just put first on the soldering iron a little bit of solder, it helps. Then we're going to touch the twist of leads and make it a little bit warmer, then put the solder on the top and run it up slowly together and then we just one more time on the opposite end and if we look yeah it's hot if we look it should be a solid connection all around we don't want it to look solid on one side but see clearly all the strands on the opposite side yeah so that's good so now we need to take off this connector here very carefully. So with a pair of tweezers is the easiest, if they're sharp tweezers or whatever you have. We need to push down on these pins just a little bit gently. Push down on the pins, pull the wires back and pull the connector part forward. You can try one wire at a time also. What I did there is I squeezed like this, put one part of the tweezer in the top and clamp on the bottom with the other one and give it a little squeeze and pull the wire. It came up pretty easily. So now what we can do is we can take off this old shrink wrap here. You have to be careful not to break the pin here. So what we need to do is cut the red wire somewhere around center. Then we have to strip both ends of the wire. And we can see that this wire has many leads or many cores, but uh, it's not pre-tinned. So we need to twist it together. And then use a little bit of solder. We'll just run it up and now it's tinned. Makes it just a whole lot easier to work with. We do the same for this side. And if you're comfortable doing it, you can actually do it without holding the wire down. It works the same way. Then what we need to do is we need to connect this together like this. So in order to do this, we need to cut our leads a little bit shorter. And you cut them as short or as long as you're comfortable with. The shorter you cut them, the closer your fingers are going to have to get, unless you're using alligator clips. This is 100% going to be hot but I've done this enough that it doesn't bother me. But if you try to do the same thing, just be prepared to feel the burn. Okay, so we check the front and the back. And the back is a little bit weak. Let's try a little bit more here. Okay, that looks solid. 
and we combine the end piece. Uh, it's a good idea, actually. I didn't think about this before. We should cut it so that the red wire and the black wire are the same length, finally. Okay, then we put this together. Okay, top and bottom are both good now, so we've got a solid connection. You don't want to pull too hard, but give it a little bit, a little bit of a pull, just to make sure it doesn't fall off easily. If it falls off easily, then that's just a mess. We've got some larger size shrink wrap. Can we just take it same size as what we had before? Let's try to open it up a little bit first. Let's go together at the same time, see what happens. Okay, now we need to put the connector back on. So to put the connector back on, we need to very carefully lift the tip of this pin a little bit. The part that we pushed down before, we need to lift it up again just a little bit. We have to be careful because this can break fairly easily. Yeah, and then once it's pushed up a little bit, then we're going to slide it back in again. And it's good to make sure that you know which side is plus and which side is minus before you get started, or else you're going to have a bit of a problem like I do right now because I didn't pay attention. If you make a mistake and you don't know, then you can take your multimeter, turn your power supply on, very carefully measure the pins to the fan and you should be getting 24 volts. I didn't fix my trim pot, so I'm getting 19 volts, but it should be positive. If it's positive, then you know that black is minus and red is now plus. If you put it in the wrong direction, then your multimeter is going to read minus. Then we align the connector parts. So connector is going to go in like this. Connector goes in like this. So plus and on this side is minus off and far away from me. Okay, so just carefully slides the connector pin back inside. You shouldn't need too much force or anything. It's going to just kind of pop in and you're going to hear it pop in and then it shouldn't pull out again after if you've uh, lifted this tab up a little bit. I'm just going to put the trim pot back into position at 24 volts. Okay, good. Now we can put the fan back in, turn it off first. Just waiting until this LED goes out here. Let's turn the power on and hope everything worked. Yeah, and now it's running. It's not silent, but we weren't going for silent. We were going for quieter than before, and it's most definitely quieter than before. You're going to want to make sure that this is not becoming hot, this little pack of resistors that you made. If you followed what I did, it's not going to be hot, but if you went and used your own values, we don't know what's going to happen. Uh, hot is not good. Even if you have this shrink wrap on it, we should design our circuits so they're not getting crazy hot.
There we go. Now we are back together. That's just one way to try and silence your fan. Uh, I used 50 ohms to drop my voltage. You can drop it a little bit further if you want to. Uh, if you drop it too far, then you won't have enough cooling for your power supply. And the farther you drop it, the more wattage you need. So use your calculator and figure out how much wattage you're going to need. Maybe you have to switch from three resistors to four resistors or just buy a one watt resistor to begin with and you're okay. The other options could be installing a completely silent power supply. And actually this is what I wanted to do but my power supplies are not strong enough. So when we swap the power supplies we have to check the amperage and make sure that the power supply that we're dropping in to replace the original one can hold the same amount of current. Or we also have a second option, which is installing 12 volt power supply or using a step down converter, a buck converter to get to 24 volts into 12 volts. Then we can use just a standard PC fan like this one. And this one is actually too big for inside the power supply, but you can switch to about 92 millimeters and that'll work. Uh, you will get a lower RPM compared to the fan that's inside, but you also have a larger amount of airflow because the size is much bigger than the fan that's inside the power supply now. Uh, I think I will probably make a video about doing this. I have a silent I have a silent 12 volt power supply, so I could install an entire power supply. I also have some buck converters here, so I can install buck converter easily enough and make another video about that. And with this fan, it'll be really nearly silent. You're not going to hear anything. We can still hear this one, but it's very reasonable. But with this fan, we're not going to hear anything. And I've been running some of these fans for over a year. It's got a three year warranty. I've been running one for over a year with uh, 24 hours per day, and it's been no problem for me. It's a good option. So I've, I hope that you've gotten something out of this video. And if you have, then please subscribe and I'll try to put out some more good content. Uh, push the like button or share the video. It helps a lot. Thanks for watching. Oh, well, now, I suppose it's quieter, but I demand silence!